I plan on using uh, your book for evil uh, as a seduction uh, system. So I'm, uh, what I'm looking for is a couple lines that are uh, going to get me laid, frankly. Wolf Blast Yellow, well, yellow Label used to be a pretty easy way of, you know, impressing somebody, but that's like, mm, I'm totally too oaky now. Mm -hmm. Who knew? It isn't true, but most people still have in their minds that French make the best wines. The French do. <laughs> the French <laughs> do. Very good. So, uh, I, I would probably, to go along with your scenario, probably look for a French wine. So the, the next thing that's quickly going to come into your mind is going to be very expensive as well. So that may be a challenge for you. But there are French wines in this book at four and four and a half stars out of five for $10 and $11 and $12. So that might be just for fun where I would want to go. And, and again, as you say, you may not want to go to a wine that everyone knows. In the 500 here, for certain you're going to find wines that you've never heard of and, and probably your target has never heard of either. Right. I don't know. I guess it depends on on, uh, on your victim, right? Uh, <laughs> what, uh, I was going to say date, but if you want to say you victim, date, well, well, it's probably well, closer to the truth. You say for evil. <laughs> um, so it, uh, it depends on, on your victim. I mean, uh, he or she might be impressed with sparkling wine. I mean, fairly traditional courting, courting kind of wine would be sparkling wine, I think. Uh, it could be a champagne or it could be a sparkling wine that's not, not quite that expensive. Um, it might be uh, something that you're going to have by itself, in which case you might something that's easy to drink, or you might be uh, actually putting out a bit of money on this uh, little enterprise of yours and maybe buying some food. I was going to suggest that something that's high alcohol might, uh, <laughs> might, <laughs> might be a good idea. And a bag to put over my <laughs> head. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really going to depend on uh, something that's a little different. Might might suggest that you're a little different, you know, that there's something more interesting about you. Well, give me something a little yeah. different then. I mean, I've got the French thing, the French, this, that's safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'll pick up on Rod's sparkling. Um, they make wines in Spain. They're called Cava, C-A-V-A. And they're made in exactly the same methodology as Champagne. Different grapes from a different part of the world, so it's not called Champagne. But they have some excellent Cava for... Sixteen, seventeen dollars, some for as low as ten, but sixteen or seventeen dollars would get you a great sparkling wine that will give the same rush, uh, and it and it's just the the bubbles take the alcohol into your bloodstream faster than not having bubbles, and that's why champagne works quickly on making you feel in a great party mood, and this sparkling wine will work exactly the same way. And then if you wanted uh, a white, I think uh, something like a nice uh, nice Chardonnay. I mean, it's kind of predictable in a way, Chardonnay, but there's some really delicious Chardonnays around. And I think you'd impress on your, on your date that, uh, you know, that, that this is not your ordinary Chardonnay. This is not your, your, your grandfather's Chardonnay. This is something rather special. And uh, we, have, we have a nice one um, in the book uh, from Wolf Glass, actually, uh, called Biliara. And it's in a it's in a plastic bottle, and uh, I saw that, and, and I thought, what a plastic bottle? A plastic bottle. Now I don't know. Plastic bottles are less romantic than uh, than glass bottles. I I don't see why glass should be more romantic than plastic. Lately, I've I've been having friends who've been saying, oh, Chilean wines, and 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 I've been showing up with Chilean wines, and people have been ooing and eyeing. But that's kind of like done now. So I need a new place that's out of the way that surprised even you guys. Two areas come to my mind very quickly and one would be picking up on your chili it would be their neighbor Argentina. So there's not that many wines in the LCBO at this point from Argentina but great great value and I, I know we're going to see more and the other place would be where you wouldn't normally think of possibly getting a still red wine and that would be from Portugal. And Portugal as well. Not many on the shelves, but what's there is very good. And we have some in our book, and we have some in our book from uh, Argentina as well. Southern Italy was, you know, for 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 decades, for centuries, has just been the, the home of, you know, plonk, you know, cheap wine, churned out in huge quantities. But over the last uh, 15, 20 years, they've really, really come up, and the Sicilian wine is doing very well now. So you might you might just look at something from that's from a, you know, a traditional. Uh, a country like Italy or France, for that matter, but then look for a different kind of region uh, to, to to get your wine from. I also have a brother and sister-in-law who are uh, uh, big on snob appeal, so I, I gave them a very expensive bottle of port for their birthdays. 
Uh, I'm looking for something a little that will still impress, but is not going to leave me hemorrhaging at the, the checkout. What's your price point? Under 50. Mm -hmm. Well, almost all the wines in our book are under 50. I noticed that, and you guys, you've sort of factored how many stars it got with the price in right. the shoe. Exactly. Right. That's, that's what we did. We tasted them. Uh, they had to meet a, a, a bare criteria for us to get into the book, and then after that, after they met that, then the price did factor in, probably no more than a half star either way. So if we felt this is a four star wine in a 12 or 15 dollar category and it was seven, well, it's now four and a half. <laughs> That's basically how we did it. Uh, but there are, there are just so many wines. And quite frankly, I, as we suggested before with your date, go to places where people aren't expecting them. It's going straight in my glove box for my next trip to the LCBO to try uh, to get a date liquored up. I mean, great. I mean, to try and impress someone with my knowledge of wine. All right. <laughs> the book is The 500 Best Value Wines of the LCBO 2008 Edition. I've been speaking with the authors Rod Phillips and Vic Herodine, and The 500 Best Value Wines of the LCBO, published by Whitecap.